Christmas is over. Let's get to it. What's up? I'm Pete Last Guy and I'm Bex Guy. Nope, nope, not that. But yes, we've been gone for quite some time here. It's been the holidays, and as we are big important adults, we have so many very important things to do. So, we've missed a number of weeks. I'm not gonna try and cover everything from the weeks that we missed, including Roblox. I might mention some things that happened, but that's too much to talk about, man. And I don't wanna hyperventilate, and seriously, just who has the time? Anyway, so let's talk about this week's Monday Night Raw. That's right, this is Raw Emotion! where I take a look at this week's Monday Night Raw and I tell you a little bit about what I think and a lot about how I feel. And oh, I don't even know where to start. Raw is weird now, man. First of all, let me start with something that just gave me a big smile. Uh, Steph is there in the middle of the ring. She's trying to make an announcement. She's trying to do her thing. And there's, of course, the CM Punk chants. And she actually stops and is like, you know, if you guys could keep that up for about 2 minutes and 15 seconds, you'd last one second longer than Punk did, so... <laughs> okay, alright. Anyway, I thought that was... Oh, that was just great. That gave me a nice little chuckle. Uh, let's talk about the tag team division real quick. So since we've been gone, uh, at Roadblock, Sheamus and Cesaro ended the New Day's record-setting tag team championship reign and uh, took those belts for themselves and then promptly had them replaced with new belts for some reason because as was evidenced by the debut match for the Universal Championship taking a perfectly good belt and replacing it with red backing always goes over well with the fans doesn't it? Mick <sighs> but I think at this point what would be welcome for me, anyway, is to see the New Day, uh, I guess, heel return? I don't know. So much about their gimmick is still really a heel gimmick. It's just that it's so over with the fans that they get treated and cheered like faces. I, I, I think if they went back to having just real bad attitudes and got real, just, ooh, real mean about stuff again, that... that would be welcome. I think we could- that could be refreshing. I- I- I hate to say this, but their gimmick, much like the bootios still left in this very old box it's getting a little stale. That being said though, the new champs do look very very strong. Obviously they are two of the physically strongest guys uh, on the roster maybe in wrestling today. Cesaro is just oh he's so jacked man and Sheamus bruh. But they look strong too. They're being made to look very very strong in the ring. Very dominant and I like that in the, the tag team champions. I think this is going in a good direction. Uh, they're kind of biting off of SmackDown's unlikely tag champs thing that they had going with Slater and Rhino, but I, these are two very different characters, and I think they can take it in a very different direction, so I'm excited to see where that goes. Hope you are, too. Uh, interaction. Let me tell you, when that Golden Truth uh, segment started up there backstage, I wasn't ready to cry. I may have, just a little, because, well, little, little, little Dusty Bear. Well, Dusty Bear, and then, of course, Gallows and Anderson had to come do their thing, which led to a match uh, in which Goldust looked stronger than he's ever looked because he was mad. I mean, they still lost the Golden Truth did because this was mostly just an enhancement match for Gallows and Anderson to make them uh, look like the strong, dominant tag team that we're constantly told that they are, even though it's never been shown since they've been in the WWE, but whatever. But there wasn't much to talk about there. What I do want to talk about is... Uh, Charlotte, or Charlotte Flair, Charlotte, Charlotte Flair. Are we calling her Charlotte Flair now? I need an official word on this because it seems to go back and forth. Yeah, no. But Charlotte comes out, addresses the uh, controversy regarding whether her shoulder was down when Bailey pinned her at the match last week, and just this whole whole feud, by the way, seems forced, if for no other reason than that Bailey had actually came out uh, last week, I believe. And, and said to Charlotte, Hey, your feud with Sasha's over. Now it's time for a Bailey feud. Like, that's one of the clumsiest segues into a storyline that I think I've ever seen in WWE. Just, hello, wrestling fan. The thing we were doing is over, and now we are going to do this thing. Enjoy your wrestling. Ready, get set, wrestle. Like, I feel like you could work in a, a much more natural... <laughs> Way to segue this in. Talk about the time in NXT a little bit more. I don't know. Just something other than like, all right, my turn to feud. Ha <laughs> ha. Regardless, I still love seeing the two of them wrestle. Obviously, Charlotte 
is, is, is amazing, even though I was so mad, gosh, I was so mad when she retained her title. I was so mad, but, oh, such a good match. I said I wasn't going to talk about Roblox. I said I, said I wasn't. Sasha bled for that. Bleh. Moving on, uh, Cruiserweight Corner is slowly becoming my sad corner. Uh, maybe it'll change, though. Because Neville! That's right, Roblox saw the re-emergence of Neville, who we haven't seen for a long time. I believe he was injured, but he's got a sweet beard now. He's, he's shaved parts of his head, and also, ooh, he's, he's bad. He's evil now. Neville's, Neville's evil. Neville. Nailed it. And on this week's episode, he honestly kind of had a little bit of a shoot in his his promo, and yeah, he's doing promos now, which is cool. There was a, I really liked his promo last week where he, you know, came out and explained, all right, I'm here to, I can't do whatever accent he has, but I'm here to make sure that you know that I am a force to be reckoned with, yada, yada, yada. And as he's being a complete jerk to everybody around him in the Cruiserweight division, the crowd is cheering and, and, and chanting, thank you, Neville. I think that really speaks to how Raw has been handling the Cruiserweights. Hmm? But at the end of his promo this week, he uh, it felt like he went on a little one of those uh, those kind of work slash shoots that the WWE is so fond of now, where he talked directly to the fans, to the audience, telling us like, oh, some of you, you Americans, by the way, some of you think, oh, I don't have enough of a personality, or you're, most of the time if you're ever talking about me, it's just to make fun of my accent, you know, uh-huh, or that I'm not relevant. Well, all right, okay, I'm gonna make myself relevant. Kind of shoots on the fans there, it feels like maybe he was releasing some actual legitimate frustration that he may have had with the fans, so uh, I like that. I like Neville, I like what he's going to be able to inject into the Cruiserweight division. I haven't been watching 205 Live regularly because it's so much wrestling. WWE, it's so much wrestling. We, we can't... We, we have things to do, man. But maybe there's a lot of really cool stuff going on over there as it stands right now. It feels like the Cruiserweight segments on Raw are just commercials now for 205 Live, uh, which sucks because I want to see more Jack Gallagher in my life. Gosh, he's the best. Wasn't on this week, though, so I'm not gonna talk about him. But honestly, I think they should have... They, they, they gave themselves an out, man, at Survivor Series. They had that match where it's like, if you lose, then the Cruiserweights come over to SmackDown, and they should have just done that, I think, but whatever. Nah. We'll see, I guess. Go, Neville. I mean, no, you're bad. Oh, you're mean. I'm supposed to boo you. Boo, Neville. Neville. Boo. Oh, speaking of people that I'm supposed to boo, but I actually want to cheer, and people that I'm supposed to cheer, that I actually want to boo, how, in what universe, is Rusev the bad guy in this storyline? Seriously, no sooner is he out of that insane storyline with Roman Reigns, where Roman Reigns was just being a complete jerk to this man and his wife and his family, and somehow was the good guy, and now... We have Enzo, who's this super over baby face, supposedly. A, shamelessly expose himself to another man's wife. B, show no remorse. C, talk about stuffing her turkey. Oh, right there in front of her and her husband and millions and millions of WWE fans. And then try to sleep with that married woman. Good guy. This is the good guy I'm talking about. The bad guy is the guy who gets mad about all of this and beats up the guy who did it. Somehow, that's the bad guy. Even though, back in Cruiserweight Corner, we've got Noam Dar and Cedric Alexander feuding over Alicia Fox. Noam Dar being the bad guy for expressing that he wants to be dating Alicia Fox instead of Cedric Alexander. And somehow that... That's a bad guy thing to do, but when Enzo does it, it's, it's a good guy thing to do. Gosh, I wonder what the difference is between all of these guys. The bad guys are foreign. That's why. Anyway, it's stupid. Stupid, stupid. And the people booking it are stupid idiots. Which brings me to the last thing I want to talk about today. Jericho versus Rollins and Reigns. That whole feud. Getting, again, like the Bootios, little stale. Obviously, I love watching... Uh, Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens riff off of each other. I could watch that forever. I could watch an entire episode of Raw that's just them riffing and then some wrestling 
mixed in, which kind of feels like what this episode of Raw was. So now that I think about it, no, I don't think I would actually want to watch that because you can have too much of a good thing. But they broke up and they got back together and now they're best friends again. And now uh, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns are back to being buddy buddy with the fist bumps and the power bombs, even though Seth Rollins has never once apologized or expressed any sort of remorse for the whole, you know, chair thing that happened, y'all remember. But you got Roman chasing the uh, Universal title, you got Chris Jericho getting hung in a cage for the Royal Rumble match, which by the way, buy our toys, buy our toys, have we mentioned the crash cage, buy it! It just keeps going around and around, and it just, it doesn't seem to be going anywhere, it doesn't seem to have any direction, it doesn't seem to have any substance to it, and then they just sprinkle in little bits of Strowman all throughout, which makes it a little bit messier, but also to me, just a little nicer, because I'm a huge Braun Strowman mark. I really am. Ever since he re-debuted, I have been on board with this jobber squashing machine. I love him. I love the way he just steps right over the top rope. I love everything about him. I love the fact that he attacked these people with Christmas. Like, I, I honestly found myself sitting there watching the beginning of the match uh, with all the dudes from the, oh gosh, from the sensitivity training sketch, which, no, I'm not gonna talk about it. It's stupid. It's stupid. Everything about it is is stupid. Raw is so stupid! Why didn't I do the SmackDown show? I, I'm sitting there watching this match about to begin, thinking this is so stupid. Why do I have to watch this match? Ah, uh, when suddenly... <laughs> Hallelujah, Braun has come to save us from terrible forced gimmick matches. Yes. And did that last week with that Sin Cara Apollo Crews match that made no sense. They're sitting there thinking, hey, this match makes no sense, and suddenly, bro! And I want there to be some sort of direction to all this, because it's, he's, he's splitting, they even made a joke about it, how he's splitting his attentions between Rollins and Reigns and, and Sami Zayn, and it's like, what, you gotta focus on one of these things. He's <laughs> a multitasking. Like, okay, that's funny, but... But really, maybe focus this guy in a little bit. You got a great talent here, you got a really cool wrestler you can do a lot of cool things with, but maybe just stick to one thing at a time so that we don't lose interest and we don't lose focus because he's a really cool character, he's a really, really good worker. Please, please don't let me down. I love Braun. That's what I'm trying to say here. I, I love Braun. But that's all I'm going to talk about this week. As I already talked longer than I wanted to, so... Go ahead and let me know, let us know, in the comments. I just motion like there's a bunch of us in here. My toys, let me, let me and my toys know. <laughs> They're my friends. But let us know in the comments what you thought about this week's Monday Night Raw, or last week's, or the week before's, or Roadblock. Because we missed all of those, but let us know what you think about them. Let us know where you think some of these storylines might go. Are you a Braun Strowman mark like myself? Are you sick of the Jericho slash, uh, Shield reunion tour bit? Give the video a like. Leave a comment, subscribe, share, you know it's YouTube, you've heard these things a million times, but come on man, actually do them this time. Jesus is watching. You wouldn't want to let him down so close to his birthday. It's not, I don't want to do that. But that's all, so hey, this match is over. And one, two, three. Nope, nope, gonna do that again. <laughs> I should know what I'm saying before I try to say it, you think? Here's how much I don't clean up my video area. This is just, this is just a pile of notes. I don't even freaking, like look at all of them under there. It's, there's so many, why? Why don't I just clean? Why do I hate cleanliness? Why must I suffer?